So in the previous video, we determined that it was going to be very difficult to demodulate our traditional DSV SE signal. Therefore, we said that we should make a little bit of a, a change, right? We said we should add some extra amount of A to our message in order to perform what we're going to call classic amplitude modulation. So we're going to add some A to this message, and then we're going to do this classic amplitude modulation. But how should we select that value of A? What, what should we use as a criteria to know what the value of A should be? And also, what we should ask ourselves is why does adding this extra A make demodulation easier? So in order to do this, let's pursue a bit of a graphical approach here for a moment. So consider your message MT, and this message, this is like two cosine waves that are added together. And we can see that right, it has this oscillating, uh, and then it's also going up and down, kind of this overarching oscillation. And so let's imagine uh, two different values of A that we can select. So let's imagine uh, adding two different values of A to our message. So we have our message here, and we can add two different values. So if we added a big value of three, then the peak would go from two up to five, and this would bring, clearly, it would bring this whole message plus A, it would make it so that it's all above zero here. But if we added a smaller value of A to our message, right, we would make it so that the smallest value of our original message has gone from minus two up to just minus one. Okay, so you could add a big number so that you bring the message plus A, you could add it, you could make a big number so that you bring everything above zero, or you could add a small number that doesn't quite bring it above zero, just shifts it up a little bit. And let's see what the difference is. So if you were to modulate these, we would see that if we modulated the message that had added a large A, now we can see that we have this blue modulation underneath, and above, right, we have what we'll call this envelope. And it looks like, right, the envelope is identical to the envelope of our original message. Okay, so when we added a big number and then modulate it, the top of this, uh, this oscillation, right, if we take a little line and just draw on top of our blue modulated message, we're going to have what we call an envelope. And the envelope matches identically to our original message. However, for the case where we added a small a and then modulated, right, we have this our modulated signal here. And if we look at where the top of the modulated signal is and follow it down, so far, right, so far it looks like our original message. But then right here, uh-oh, what happens? Well, now we have this case where the top of the message actually kind of bumps up, which is different than what we had here. And then kind of from this whole area, right, we have a case where this top of our modulated signal does not really look like our original message at all. So what can we infer from this? Well, we can say that when we added a big enough A, the envelope has the exact same information as the message. However, when your A was small, the envelope of the modulated signal, so the top of each one of these oscillations, uh, it, this is the envelope, and it is going to contain different information. So this is going to become important later on because if we have the top of that modulated signal containing the same information as the message, perhaps we can pursue a different demodulation strategy than the previous one. And the previous one, recall for DSBSC, we said that that previous demodulation strategy was not going to be very successful because our channel was going to introduce noise and distortion, making it difficult to perform the demodulation using that what we call coherent cosine wave. So how should we select A? Well, the first criteria that we've just seen is that we should select an A so that A plus the message is bigger than zero, right? So in this case, right, when we selected a big A, when we add the A and the message together, it shifted everything from minus two all the way right up above zero just kept shifting it up so if you select a big enough a you're going to be able to make a plus the message greater than zero and as we saw this is going to give us an envelope that's identical 
to the transmitted message. It contains the same information as the transmitted message. So we'll, we'll, for the first criteria, we're going to say that A should be, A plus the message should be larger than zero at all times. Okay, now the other criteria that we should have is that we should make sure that the bandwidth of this is much larger than MT. So in, in these previous uh, slides, right, I had the frequency fairly low, just so that you can see what the modulation looks like, right? You can see pretty clearly where how it's oscillating back and forth, and the top of this uh, cosine wave is is reaching to the envelope. But really, right, this this frequency should be much larger. If if we made it large enough, you wouldn't really be able to see it very well, um, and it would just look like a constant up and down, right? And we wouldn't be able to see it. But you, in real life, you should select your frequency so that it would be uh, very very high uh, compared to your your original message bandwidth. So if criteria one and two are met, what we can say is that the envelope is going to contain the same information as the message. And we're going to consider this criteria one in detail next. <clears throat>